Today's participants are Kristen Congdon, Richard Gilson. We join the conversation in the faculty lounge. When you walk in, it's structured so you see the Egyptian right. <laughs> flat paintings, and yeah. and then you 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 transition through the Renaissance, and you go, wow! All yeah. of a sudden, you see not you don't see, you perceive through the eyes of the artist. Yeah. So that means the interpretation part of that and the meaning part. So it is, it is striking. And I'm not sure whether that is uh, a result of upbringing, I don't know. Yeah. Or well, I think it helps you pay attention to certain things I think that so. many other people wouldn't pay attention to because you watched your stepfather pay attention right. in a certain kind of way. Well, it's sort of, it, it's sort of like the, the meaning of things. Uh, the, you can see something, and seeing it doesn't mean that you perceive it. Uh, right. you, you have a deeper right. connection between the experience of, of seeing and, and your memories and how that inter, uh, intertwines with uh, the artist's background, with the interpretation of the art and whatever. Right. Uh, these, are, these are areas that are not mine, but but they probably use. I, I suspect so. Yeah. yeah. So, so what is this uh, uh, human factors thing anyway? I mean, I, I've been at the university now for 15 years, and I hear all these stories about the human factors <laughs> program being one of the biggest, most important <laughs> programs on campus. And here you are, somebody yeah. that I've never met until yeah. today. No, we've never um, met. What, what is this? Well, it, it, I, the, the, I always start out saying, well, the long interpretation is, and, and finally my dad said, don't say that. Don't tell, right. Say it in plain English. Yeah, <laughs> so that I understand. <laughs> and, uh, so that he understands. Ah. And, uh, and I usually say it's, it's uh, how to make it uh, uh, easier and safer to use machines and systems. It could be consumer products, it could be spacecraft, it could be computers, it could be airplanes. Okay, and when yeah. airplanes is what you mostly do, right? I do. A, I have a lot of specialty in airplanes. Yes, I've been a pilot for 37 years and uh, have thousands of hours of, of flying, um, uh, as in a variety of testing environments. Uh, flew the Atlantic for Mrs. Lindbergh, uh, the Lindbergh That's family. That's fascinating. Um, uh, so the flying experience I have a lot of. So you just fly the little ones, or you know how to fly the big ones too? Well, they know probably uh, 60 different types of airplanes and helicopters. I, I'm oh, a flight instructor in too? helicopters as well as airplanes. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't really make any difference whether it's a big or small airplane. Uh, add power, they go up. You take off power and they come down. <laughs> They're yeah. all basically the same. Yeah. So yeah. you try to make them safer for us. Um, so you're looking at safety kinds of things? Or you're looking sure. at how people interact with machines so that they might make mistakes with them? How you, really, how to avoid mistakes and how to use them more efficiently. Okay. And, uh, okay. I, so you're assuming that there's some kind of universal there that all humans will approach a machine in a certain kind of way. Well, the Is designers do a lot of times. Mm -hmm. you, you get you get into something where you you uh, you have a computer application and you look at it and you keep making this mistake all the time and say, well, gee, darn, uh, it's my mistake. Well, no, it isn't. It's oh, maybe the designer's design mistake. Right. And so in aviation, there's the consequences are pretty severe. Right. So really, the way I started this, and, and when I was a student uh, uh, at, at Princeton, um, uh, essentially it was in, uh, prior, to, prior to that, I was only an engineer, and I was a, uh, 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 actually a math major. Um, so you started, started as a out, math major and then became uh, an engineer? Sort of had enough for a dual major. Okay. And uh, so I took a couple of courses in psychology, and I, as it, <laughs> as it turned out, um, I, I sort of got bored. Oh. And, and, and this is with all due respect to engineering, but it, um, I was doing research one day, a, and uh, uh, campus was closed, and I needed to make money uh, uh, to stay in school. And, and uh, so I was looking out, and this fellow's walking along, having a grand old time, and he walked flat into a uh, uh, into a stop sign 
and it went fah, 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 like that on his yeah. face. And since nobody was on campus, he looked around to see if, if anybody had seen him. I was on the third floor, and I opened up the window and said, yeah. So this was kind of a, a turning point for you. It was definitely a turning point. So it was point. a philosophical kind of thing? It was an epiphany. Okay. Uh, it was, and it was what did like, it say to you? It said, uh, gee, if that was the most exciting thing you've done today, <laughs> you've got to do something else. Right. So I took a class in, uh, in thinking. Uh-huh. Uh, which is a part of psychology, and the professor said, you should go to graduate school. Oh. And so he sent me to a uh, professor at Princeton, uh, and uh, I worked, uh, worked there in sensory psychology, how we, how we um, see, hear, smell, taste, touch, uh -huh. um, and uh, with uh, some great people there, just uh, actually a Nobel Prize winner in hearing. Oh. Um, and it was, a, it was a wonderful time. Uh, uh, and it was an academic time uh, where uh, the first time I <laughs> left after a year and a half hadn't been out of town and went to, uh, uh, I, I don't know whether it was Walmart or Kmart, uh, I looked around and said to my wife Liz, I said, I think these people are, are a little strange. And she looked at me and she said, no, they aren't. Oh. It, was <laughs> it was me because it had been so refined oh. uh, atmosphere. Um, so it was, it was an interesting time, it was a wonderful time. Um, and the transition is um, essentially uh, the human to the machine. Uh -huh. So before human factors had really developed, how do we design things from my engineering standpoint and how do we think about those things from a human standpoint? Well, gee, you can't change evolution that much. For, for example, aviation in 100 years we can't evolve the body, so what do we do? Design the machine in a different way to adapt to the body. So that's why I'm concerned about why we have to sit in those little seats on the plane <laughs> and get all crumped up when we go traveling somewhere. It's all and that's economics. It's economics, yeah, exactly. Right. So they don't care whether you're comfortable or not. They well, just there's there's care. Yeah. Uh, they, there was a, there's, they tried to pack more in one time, and I was asked about a design to uh, make zigzag seats to uh, walk up and down the aisle and yeah. sort of nix that. I think that was a good thing to nix. Yeah. yeah. But it does cause other things. Uh, for example, um, uh, the high seats are so you can put luggage underneath. Right. Well, that causes people to have uh, uh, the, their legs uh, so that their, their uh, muscles are, are sort of... Uh, bunched up underneath uh, because their feet are not on the floor for some people, right. which means that they may have some problems with um, the circulation, circulation yeah. and on long distance flights that may lead to other things. Mm -hmm. So one design leads to something else. Right. And so in human factors, to answer your question, is, is to deal with design aspects uh, from the human side. In psychology, the engineering side is from the machine side. Yeah. So you do some defense kinds of things too, don't you? Sure. So it's not just commercial planes, but it's also how can pilots be safer? Yes. And how can we be more efficient in the military? Those kinds of things? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, uh, some of that is, is uh, uh, under um, c uh, clearances, so uh, obviously I can't say anything about oh. that. But, um, so you uh, do the kinds of work that you can't talk about? Uh, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> well, it's great fun. It's just, yeah. Um, it's where so the military hires you, or the well, defense department. The defense department, uh, where um, a bunch of people get together in think tanks, and w they oh. put us to behind steel doors and oh. the hand prints and the oh. eye prints and the whatever they are. Do you do that on re in Research Park, or do you fly go somewhere no, to you do have that? No, you have to do it elsewhere. Okay. Because I know we have those kinds of places at Research Park, or supposedly, at least that's yeah. the story. Uh, the, 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 these have to be in elsewhere. Oh. And, and the great thing is you get to be meet some of the best people in the world, oh. and you get to talk with them and, and spend days with them. and Figure out what they're thinking. And figure out problems and yeah. take one side of the issue and take another side. It's, it's just great fun. Huh. So uh, That's terrific. So, so how... Uh, human factors is relatively new. Is that true, or, or am I just well, imagining no, that? No, you're right. It's about 50 years. Um, oh. uh, uh, World War II was really the onset. There were things before then, but uh, World War II had a lot of, a lot of input uh, mistakes and designs. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
certainly Three Mile Island was a was a big turning point. Well, my mother was there when the Three Mile Island happened. No. No, she was about 15 miles away. Near Harris, Harrisburg. Harrisburg. Well, she was in one of the little teeny towns. She's I'll a minister. I'll and be um, I remember that because we were really nervous about it. Yes. And she did develop some um, problems with throat cancer later on. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, but, but it's, it's yeah. okay. She was yeah. taken care of. But of course, you always have that sense of what would happen in a lingering way from a disaster like that. Well, it, 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 there are a whole bunch of aspects about that, but um, one of the larger aspects is the, 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 the idea that we always thought that more information was better. Right. It isn't. Why isn't it? You can be overwhelmed by information. Oh, I feel overwhelmed most times. Yeah, it's like... It's like an email. <laughs> like, exactly. Don't tell me all that stuff. I don't want to know. <laughs> or, or reading yeah. this journal and saying, here's 25 pages right. and only one sentence is, is really relevant or right. none. Or so many journals you think that you need to have and you, exactly. you don't get any of them read because it's just too much. You can't even make the decision. Right. Uh, in, in, in an effort to inform about everything, you inform about nothing. So are human factors people going to help my overwhelmingness? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What are you going to do to make my life easier We're as a professor? <laughs> Simplify. I, mean, I like the way, I like the idea that you were telling me that you get away from the university and go to Cedar Key, Key. and you fly there. You don't even have to mess with the traffic. No. And you do that every weekend. Yeah. And it's not like, I mean, I know this is true because when I go somewhere, which is supposed to be just to get away, um, it's really working time. It's the time when your mind just kind of sure. allows everything to get in line <laughs> yeah. with the ideas, I yeah. guess you might say. It's like the importance yeah. of sleep. Yes. Oh, you filter out, w when you let your mind loose, you, you filter out the things that are just trivial, the, the little telephone call, the little yeah. thing you need to do, and the bigger things sort of rise to the surface. One time, one time after, uh, uh, and I know you've been over, uh, I heard one time you were in Africa, but one oh. time from coming back from Australia, um, I looked at, my too. looked at my desk oh. and it was filled up with things, and I finally yeah. said, that's it. I can't get through this. I pushed it to the side and literally put it on the floor. Just dumped it on the floor. And you left it on the floor? Left it on the floor for about two weeks. Uh -huh. and I stepped over it. Oh. Surprisingly, the things that were important rose up again How did and they, came on People would call you and say, exactly. did you get to that? Exactly. Wow. And the things that weren't important, I finally just Don't swept look. it away. Yeah. And it worked out just fine. We need to learn to do that a little <laughs> bit more, I think, to be able to get through our well, lives. Well, to get to the successful students, I think what we the, the th to create a theme is so important yeah. so, that, so that they understand, for example, um, I'm teaching tonight neuroscience. Uh -huh. And um, there's a, I mean, the brain has so many aspects about it, but the, the fundamental things of, of how it works, um, uh, that it transmits by electricity, that we think by chemicals, uh -huh. um, and where that happens in, in conjunction and how it works in layers, uh, that the spine does one thing and the, uh, mm. it's, uh, and the base of the brain does another, and there's a, a, a nice place in there for, for uh, for shifting cars, there's a nice place in there for uh, mm. uh, for uh, uh, lo loved ones, and there's a wonderful yeah, place nice. in there for for memories of things and mm -hmm. planning things. Mm -hmm. So, oh. so if you take it by themes as opposed to here's all the particular names and structural areas, which they have to know, yeah. it simplifies, and it seems to me that's important. So that's the way they can kind of categorize things and make sense of things. Exactly. So why is it? I mean, here you are. You're one of the top scholars uh. at, at UCF. <laughs> and um, uh, Why are um, you at UCF? I mean, what is it about UCF oh. that is so exciting for you? Oh, it was, it, 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 it's really a, f a funny story. Um, I was teaching at Ohio State. I was a professor up at Ohio State, uh -huh. Big Ten University. And, um, uh, as it, uh, and I got a call from a friend of mine. Uh, and she said uh, she was considering going to UCF or to um, University of Southern California. Oh. And I said, Whoa. "Well, that's interesting." Yeah. You know, they put it on. She put it on a par. Yeah. Uh, finally, um, uh, uh, I was contacted um, um, uh, because she went to Southern California for another person, mm -hmm. and so I gave some recommendations, and they said uh, we'd like to do a feasibility study to, for a PhD program. 
and in the state, first in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, well, why don't I discuss this with my wife, Liz? And so uh, this is February in Columbus, Ohio. Oh, whoa. And I said, Florida how about to spending a year yes. down in Florida? Oh, so we already ha had a home down here. So you were already at Cedar Key before that? Already had that. And you were already flying from OSU to Cedar Key? Yes. Smart guy you are. And <laughs> That's the smart thing. <laughs> yeah. So we, I said, would you like as a birthday present, it was in uh, February, yeah. to go down for a year in Florida? And she said, yes. And I said, should we discuss this? And she said, we have. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, got her priorities right. <laughs> so I came down here essentially to um, create uh, the first PhD program in, in human factors. Oh, I didn't know that. See? Oh, wow. yeah. And, uh, and so it took about three years of planning, uh, mm -hmm. uh, or actually it took a year of planning, and they, uh, I was asked, uh, uh, why don't you stay and implement it? And I said, well, I'm going to need this, 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 and this. And they said, okay. Okay. And I, <laughs> I should have this. Uh, right, should have right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I spent about uh, three years planning it, mm -hmm. and um, and I went to uh, uh, the final part of this was going to uh, uh, the Board of Regents to present this. Oh. And there's two parts. Mm -hmm. The first part is, uh, so I'm up in Tallahassee, uh, mm -hmm. the provost is there, the president's there, and um, uh, the first day they go through a committee, and the this committee is... Trevor Colburn way back then? Right, yeah? exactly okay. right. So they, they go through this... Uh, the Saturday before, is the, or the day before, is the committee meetings. Uh -huh. And they had five people on the committee of new programs. We were four, number four. First one person got up and gave, a, I thought, an excellent delivery. Uh, they had a motion denied. Wow, wow. Did they say why? Do you remember? I don't remember at all. I was oh. stunned. Oh, wow. Like, what's going to happen to me now? I'm number four. Number, yeah. The second one got up modifying notes, gave a delivery, turned down. The third one was turned down. <gasps> you must have been thinking this is a bad thing. I'm trying to write notes and change what I was going to say. Yeah. The com the com our UCF PhD program, um, is there a motion? The motion, uh, uh, there's a motion, is there a second? There's a second. All those in favor, aye. And then it was, was to, to number five. And I went, I didn't even get out of my seat. The provost came over, oh. leaned in my ear, oh. and he said, great speech. <gasps> oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's terrific. That's a great story. I never said a word. That was the most powerful, important speech. <laughs> you probably worked on it all. I mean, yeah, that's great. That's never funny. said a word. You must have, everybody must have celebrated after that. Oh, it was wonderful. And the next day it's pro forma, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so it was fine, but it was, it was great. And it, it, it says you do your work beforehand. Right. And you don't have to so do it. That was the other. all there, apparently. It was there. Yeah. And we, um, the natural placement of uh, UCF um, in the in the state, um, the the people around the the, um, uh, the the research part next door, the Navy, uh, all those things were natural. Okay, so this it's the location that makes human factors so important. Yeah, and, and, and the gravity of the, the the people. I mean, I had enough from the chancellor at the time. I think it was Chancellor Reed, um, mm -hmm. uh, who said. Uh, uh, bring in major people. Here's a number of people you can bring in. We're able to do it. You create a, you know, a sort of a magnet, a sort right. of a, um, a uh, uh, critical mass right. that draws other people. Yeah. And once the once that was done in the first ten years, it just took off. The biggest thing that happened, I think, here was uh, I was asked by a staffer to name the program, oh. and they said you're going to call it PhD in Human Factors. And I thought it seemed like it was restrictive. And I said, well, why don't we call it PhD in psychology? Oh. Which then was you can do so much more. Which you? was the which was the best thing. That was a smart thing to do. Uh, maybe lucky, but yeah. um, it it meant that other programs were available um, uh, without doing all the things I had done. Right. Um, right. Uh, the, we have a clinical PhD program. That could just fit in under that because you already had it 
in place. Yeah, the, the now you have tracks. We have, they're essentially their own programs, but they didn't have to do all the groundwork. Right. So in the industrial organization, it, it worked out very well. It was a good, lucky move. Very good. So it was a fun thing yeah. to do. Well, the rumor around campus is that um, psychology is a happy department. It is a very happy department. Yeah. Yeah, Not all departments are happy, but yeah. this is happy because, because people love their work, and I think they're supported That's in their work, and there's there's a lot of good people, as you say, yeah. in that program. It, it, it is a convivial department. Mm -hmm. um, people like each other, they don't socialize very much. Mm. You're um, busy doing your work and going to Cedar Key. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean to help out the other person to teach a course or yeah. to uh, help out in a piece of research or collaborate in some way, uh, um, use uh, students together. Uh, we do that yeah. and it's fun. We have a really, really interesting people. Yeah. It's a fun, fun department. So tell me about one of the, or maybe the highlight of your career. Huh. Is there something uh, real that you feel that you have done that has really made a difference? Highlight of the career. I, 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 maybe I haven't reached it yet. Oh, <laughs> you're still working on it. I'm still working yeah. on it. So what well, would it be? You know, I, I think that um, reaching status and as a uh, and future work as in human factors a in aviation pr particularly I do a lot of work asked to do a lot of things in and outside the university and um, in solving problems in aviation um, and to uh, move that into the future I'd, I'd say that's probably the biggest thing okay. um, I'm doing some work now in uh, uh, actually in neuroscience since I teach more and more of the uh, uh, undergraduate and graduate neuro neuroscience mm -hmm. in an area of Parkinson's oh. because as you'll see I get a little bit of a shake mm -hmm. here and uh, about a year ago I self-diagnosed since yeah. I teach this stuff oh, Parkinson's. No so you knew that you had that. Oh uh, yeah. Because uh, I say that usually those are the last people to know. But I teach this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I already have two patents in this area oh, um, right. in deep brain stimulation and I've been in uh, observing surgery and uh, oh. working on viral transplant uh, uh, transport systems and and other kinds of things uh, stem cells uh, oh, research stem cell research too um, so so I figure maybe maybe aviation will be a sideline and maybe uh, oh. uh, the Nobel Prize would be very nice and uh, in Parkinson's and the other associated diseases of neurodegenerative diseases uh, Alzheimer's and oh. and a variety of others. So are you watching the stem cell research debate real yeah, closely? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too, as a scientist, I don't think about the politics very much. Uh, you it, just want access to what you need. Yeah, I think, I, think, uh, I think maybe we're putting too much into the stem cell research in the sense of um, uh, thinking that's going to be the, the, the final word. Oh. I really think the uh, it's going to be end up the, the stem cells are sort of sort of um, uh, nondescript uh, they grow up in in the neighborhood so if you put them in a certain neighborhood they're going to become whatever that neighborhood is okay um, but the uh, I think the real thing is to use our own systems um, and to change the genetic defect in the, in the gene huh. and you say well how can that be done well it's done all the time like HIV invades the genes and alters the genes. Yeah. Well, why don't we use that for good? Yeah. Use the same virus to transport, to, to put something in there and patch it. So I, I find it really fascinating that a psychologist, because you're a psychologist, yes. right? You're not a psychiatrist, would know all of this stuff that seems very medical to me. Yeah. But because I, I think of psychologists as people who basically you think of the clinical psychologist, sure, sure. and I understand how that translates to human right. factors. Mm -hmm. But then when I hear you talk about all this medical kind of stuff, it says to me, either you're doing things that most psychologists don't do, or they do do that. It depends on the psychologist, probably pretty rare, but uh, the theme is I always want to know how something works. Oh. How does it work? And so machinery and computers are sort of interesting and I like to problem solve but I get bored because if I solve the problem I want to do other things. I haven't been able to solve the problem in the brain. Now that's a biggie. Yeah, that is a and, biggie. And so the excitement of doing things in, in areas that nobody knows and discovering something new is so 
fascinating. You know perfectly yeah. well as a, yeah. as a, as a researcher mm -hmm. the, the, the joy of discovering something new the right. first time. Right, right. There's just a certain kind of curiosity that mm -hmm. just drives you beyond, uh, uh, you know, everything else. You just have to keep going. And when you, when you get it, yeah. uh, and it, before you publish it, that moment of joy, uh -huh. And then you have to oh, go right, ahead right. and write it up and you know Check get the, the papers. Spelling errors <laughs> and, yeah, right. <laughs> All that stuff. Yeah. But it is pure fun, right. and I love to problem solve. Talk to me a little bit about your upbringing because um, I know that you had a stepfather who was a very yeah. well-known artist, and yeah. I'm wondering how um, that role model created or helped you become who you are today. It's hard to evaluate. Mm -hmm. um, um, childhood was, uh, I don't remember much before I was about 13. Oh, why was that? Uh, it was a, uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, it was a pretty difficult time. Difficult time. So you, were, you perhaps wanted to forget. Yeah, I prob probably did. Yeah. Uh, we moved many places. And you weren't very wealthy and money was an issue. We didn't have any money at yeah. all. Um, and that's fine, yeah. uh, but there were other troubling times, uh -huh. and so, uh, uh, and when my uh, mother divorced, uh, uh, my mother and father were divorced, I thought it was my fault, like every kid, right. and I was about 14, and, and it uh -huh. was a tough time. Yeah. But um, uh, she married this artist, Emery Clark, who uh, was a uh, uh, caricaturist, and he was a wonderful man. Uh, that's great. And um, it, 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 it's like an, like an opening of a world. It's like a different, different, uh, just a different world I'd never seen before. Light came in. So did he teach you to see, or did he teach you to think about how to, to see? Think. Okay. He, he taught me how to think about anything, mm. and he opened up a horizons. He's a creative, uh, sensitive man, uh -huh. and and just all of a sudden the light, the doors were open. The, the light was there. So do you think this relates to the psychology interest too? Because he was looking, if he does caricatures, he's trying to get not only at physical kinds of things, but how a personality can be conveyed. I'm not sure. Actually, um, if, you were, if I were to predict it when I was 16, um, whether I'd be a university professor, I would have never thought that. Oh, what did you think you would be? 